Diane Pag knew about it before I did, and she told me she said there's a new Jesuit school opening up, up on, on the hill, and you need to go there. And I just couldn't believe they're going to build a Jesuit college here in town. I heard so many good things about the Jesuits that it uh, made it mandatory that I would go to Le Moyne. I first chose to go to Syracuse University, and I ended up in a long waiting line to register over there. And a gentleman near me mentioned that there was a new school opening in Syracuse. It just sounded exciting and friendly. That's the other thing. It seemed welcoming to me. So I asked him where it was. He said it was down at Columbus Circle. So I left the SU line and went down and registered at Le Moyne. And I've never been sorry. The classes were held downtown in the first year. Our first building, Le Moyne Hall, was right across from the cathedral. And then another part of our first class was up on James Street at what was called the Corinthian Club. It was a mansion and it was beautiful. You walk in the front door and these beautiful stairs go up like that. And it was just fabulous. The classrooms were in what were bedrooms and straight back chairs. We got to know everybody because of the close quarters. And about 10 o'clock, they start cooking downstairs. And we lost all interest in studying. All I wanted to do was go eat. By that time, they put the shovel in the ground. They were starting these two buildings, what is now Gruen, that was the administration building, and the building next door, which was the science hall. Most of the students were eager to see the new building and participate in the new building, which would be a complete contrast from the first year of college. So when we moved in the second year, we had a historic march from downtown. It was very busy, it was crowded. The, the motorcade was a lot of fun and people stopped and they were flags were waving and that was very exciting. We made a lot of noise. We started on James Street and went downtown and came around in front of the Catholic Women's Club where the uh, business students were to get them into the procession. I remember Bishop Forey standing in the doorway of the chancery waving to us with a big smile on his face. He was very proud of the fact that Le Moyne was here. It was his force that brought it here. It was a pretty big day. We were quite excited about it, and of course, uh, overwhelmed when we saw these buildings. <laughs> it was pretty bare. There wasn't a tree, there wasn't grass. It had rained. And it was all mud, it was still in construction. So we walked on boards. It was pretty remarkable to me to see these two buildings. Even though it was unfinished and no grass or anything, it still looked beautiful to us. I thought it was wonderful. I thought, I can't wait to go to school here. We were quite anxious to enter the new building and see what it's like and be a student in the new building. Everything was brand new, no used books or anything. Everything was just fabulous. Our group was maybe 25 to 30 percent veterans coming out of World War II. Keep in mind, most of these folks would have never gotten to go to college if it wasn't for the GI Bill. Yeah, it was $400 a year. There were about 400 guys and 35 girls. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> Most of our teachers were Jesuit, and of course we had a lot of Jesuit scholastics teaching us at that time. They were all excellent teachers. They kept tabs on us. And then Father Brady, Father Andrew Brady, taught us theology. He was so gung-ho that uh, he never spoke from a book, and he would walk up and down the aisles when he was teaching, and so you, of course you didn't, you didn't dare fall asleep. There was a, a real feeling of uh, dedication to learning. These were all Jesuits that in later years they became personal friends, people that we would have dinner with. The guys were all at Wanda's. Well, that was the hangout. They talk about Dolphy Day today, of course, and there was no Dolphy Day in those days. The attraction was it seemed to be so small that uh, you almost had to rub shoulders together. You couldn't even get in the door. I went there once and there was a bureau over the floor. I thought, I've got to get out of here. I think there were quite a few Dolphy Days at Wanda's. I really felt that there were so many good friends that were made at Le Moyne that were forever. I met wonderful people. The Jesuits were great. The approach for a Jesuit education provided a good base to go out into the world. Trying to do for others 
is what I find important. And I have lived by that all my life. Everything we did from 1947 to 1951 was another Lemoyne first. We helped to choose names like the Dolphin, the Boot and Buskin, the Black Robe, and you have that feeling that uh, it belongs to you. We didn't have any idea that we'd end up with a separate chapel and a separate library and a separate theater. There was a time when I had to identify who Lemoyne was 40 or 50 years ago. I don't have to do that anymore but I still always mention that I graduated from the first class. And I think it's the best class that ever graduated from here. We've done pretty well.